Cool. Yeah, it looks like we straight. You want me to put That's your beautiful. tumblers on camera instead of the Fiji water? Uh, my tumblers. Uh -huh. <laughs> you be knowing the proper terms for shit and everything. Mm -hmm. Your tumblers. Uh, peace to the saints. Jabrizi pull up, but I said, hey, you here now? Let's do this work. So today's topic is actually one that I think is really appropriate for a gentleman such as yourself, because it's about how insecurity can get you dumped and cheated on. Hopefully in that order. Hopefully he's not cheated on and then dumped. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're going to be talking about it. And when we're talking about insecurity, obviously, I know you personally, so I know you're not an insecure guy, but you've probably been on the other side of it, where you're out in the world, you might see a female, she might see you, and she might be looking a little bit too hard, her man is there, and then you start to see that insecurity in that gentleman manifest. Oh, yeah. Talk to me. Oh, yeah. You know what? Should we, should we talk about the trip in uh, Mykonos? Or uh, uh, in Europe, just in Europe in general? Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. Let's talk Europe. All right. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, let's talk Vegas. Let's talk Vegas. <laughs> okay, we're going to start in Vegas? All right. Let's get it. Look, I, I think, uh, look, if you don't have a savage story like this, then I don't know if you're really living. Oh, I think I know where you're going. It's here are in Vegas. Are we talking Russian? Oh, okay. Let's yeah, go. yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So, so uh, here we go. One time I was just cruising, you know, walking around. Uh, in a particular hotel, right? And uh, I seen this cute girl, a European girl. And what is that considered? you Europe? Russian? Yeah. 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 For sure. Okay. Absolutely. All right, just making sure. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so I go and holler at her. Okay. Now, notice you. I didn't know she had a boyfriend. Right. She was solo when you saw her. She was solo when I saw her. Yeah. Come downstairs. I got my arm around and everything. You know, we kicking it. And real she cool. didn't mention it. Her man ain't. She and come up. Well, here's the thing. She did mention it, but she mentioned as if they're apart. So, like, how she like said Like, our time that, together is our time together. Our time apart is our time apart. She mentioned like it was an open relationship. That's okay. how she tried to state it. Fair enough. Like, phrase it to me in her, her head to me. And uh, next thing you know, I'm chilling with her. I'm with a couple of guys I know. Uh -huh. And then this guy comes down. He's super angry. Ah. Yeah. First warning sign of you not being player. Getting mad. Mm. You look like a sucker. Mm. And you know what I like about the game is when you started hollering at her, it's not your responsibility to say, hey, Shorty, you got a man? If he's not right there, we can just assume that he doesn't exist. And we can operate appropriately and try to function. Mm -hmm. And if he does exist, it's her responsibility to let you know because at the end of the day, she's loyal to him, not you. Exactly. Mm. And uh, so then we fast forward, right? Uh -huh. Homie is angry. He give me a mean mug. He take her phone. He puts it on top of a uh, of her purse. Grabs it. Grabs her. They speaking in Russian. In Russian. And uh, then they biz bounce mm. right out. Right. Now the next thing that happens is I'm like, yo, I didn't get her number. I can't get her number. Right. None of her social contacts. Huh. None of that. Did but you the, know her full name? No. Oh, wow. No. It, it get like that sometimes. The game is flowing, you know. Mm -hmm. And to me, a female's name is not even really important until I know enough about her that I'm like, okay, I really want to make sure I remember her. She's a factor. Exactly. But let me advise all of you, when you meet someone to capture the person's name, whether they're male, female, mm -hmm. someone in the service industry, hugely important and is only helpful to you. So no matter how low or high someone is, remember that name because you might miss a... Female, talk to me. <laughs> I like the way we're trying to uh, mm -hmm. contain the um, choice of words. True uh, indeed. As of lately, and it's been such a challenge. True but, indeed. Um, nonetheless, old girl, I say in my head, I said, yo, she's going to come back. Okay. I said that in my you head. You had a feeling. Just the, the pimp bone told you. It was. It was mm -hmm. speaking to me. I said, no, my uh, pimp senses is tingling. <laughs> I feel like Spider-Man, 
right? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> just, <laughs> and I just chilled there. I just chilled there at the bar, uh -huh. you know, sipping on my um, non-alcoholic beverage. And uh, Peace of the Saints. Next thing you know, she came down. Uh -huh. Dolo. Dolo. Uh -huh. And said, let's go. Let's get out of here before he comes back. Oh, before he comes back? She said, like, he was a, the, her PO or something. Good Lord. Oh, they disrespectful. Man, mm. it's so sad because uh, something happened that night, but we're not going to say. But what was crazy was the woman spoke of his insecurities and the oh, reason she why. she even talked about it. She talked about it. She expressed it to me, and that's why she's lost interest in him mm -hmm. tremendously. And I was like, mm, this, is a this is exactly what will make the woman not want to be around you. You're not even confident in yourself, and when you have to... Uh, Go through so much effort to, to feel understood. You know what's curious to me is that if you already have the female, you have her. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't be worried about who else could get her. Mm -hmm. She's already yours. And you have to be confident in that reality. Mm -hmm. The problem comes wherein you feel like it's shaky. And in behaving as though the foundation of your relationship is shaky, you're manifesting that because she can see your uncertainty. And then she starts to scratch her head like, well, why doesn't he feel like I'm his if I am in fact his? Maybe he doesn't think he's good enough for me. And maybe if he thinks that, maybe he's right. Maybe he's not good enough. Mm -hmm. And so your insecurity brings insecurity into that female's mind. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible thing. It's a bad chain reaction. Sir, would you be kind enough to rip that poster off? It's a little bit in the shot. I tried to shift it out. Yeah, I think you can, you can reach your hand in. Now, here's a couple areas of insecurity that we've identified for the male. Okay. Uh, one major area of insecurity is sex, right? Yeah. Be like, you know, I ain't got the King Kong joint, so, you know, I don't know if I could really lay it down like it needs to be laid down. Another area of insecurity is the financial. They try to pretend as though they're bald and like Spalding when in fact they're not. So they portray themselves to be a wealthy man, and they might buy a couple items in front of the female, they'll get they floss on, mm -hmm. and then she uncovers that. Ah, uh, you're really not living like that. And then the third one is the clinginess, which comes in the form of you saying things like, the girl's gonna go out, oh, who are you going out with? What time are you leaving? What time are you coming back? Oh, you hanging out with uh, that whole girl, Chelsea? You know, you just start getting too deep into the situation when really you should keep it player and know that if she is indeed your girl, mm -hmm. you just need to know the basics of who you're heading out with, where you're heading to, have fun. Let me know when you get back. Mm -hmm. Not tell me now, when are you going to get back? Because truth be told, when you go outside having fun, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You're going out socially, right? But let me know when you get back just out of respect because you're under my leadership and you're under my protection. So if something happens to your five foot four ass, <laughs> daddy got to come, you know, find out and slap some helmets off. So just let me know when you touch back in. Mm -hmm. So that's just a matter of relationship that you would have with any of your loved ones, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not like you're interrogating the female. Often when you get clingy and you start going Pepe Le Pew on her, ironically, that's what actually makes you want to run. When you chase, it makes you want to run. That's facts. And this is, this is very common stuff for most cats. Now, with, in terms of the, the sex thing, I've identified, we're actually going to do a series, by the way. Oh, we're snap. We're going to do a member-only series. Oh, snap. And it's going to be crazy because, and it has to be member-only because it's going to be a little bit explicit. Oh! And it's going to be explicit because to understand and explain some things with regards to sex, yeah. you really got to talk about it. You got to get detail with it. This is not, this is not for the uh, weak hearted. No, uh, This no. is not for the weak hearted. And I'm basically trying to make sure that for the people who are insecure about sexy like Mark Clay, you know, I ain't got the swipe like that. He's like, you know, I ain't got the BBC. So the question is, you know, like, how do I survive in this, this game? Because we know these girls have been, they got a few miles on them. And I'm coming in after Mr. Marcus then went through there and, and samurai it. And I'm just coming in fencing. How do I make sure that she's satisfied? So we're going to do a series number, and we're even going to break it down. It's going to be myself and Sarah is going to give you some game from the female side. We're going to talk about intercourse in like kind of the three stages, like before intercourse, mm -hmm. i.e. the foreplay, 
how do you do that? Like really breaking it down, like how long should you do it? What should you do? Then we're gonna talk about the intercourse. How long should it be? What are the different positions you should get into? Mm-hmm. Like how do you survive? How do you stretch it out so you get enough time? And then the third point is post-sex, which a lot of guys actually forget about the post-sex, which is actually a part of the entire experience for the female, mm-hmm. right? Like for you, the foreplay might not even be a factor because you're ready to go. Mm-hmm. The foreplay is to get her warmed up mentally, spiritually, physically. Mm-hmm. But you came in the game ready to go, right? Yeah. You're really concerned about that middle part. And then the post part is also a part to like, you know, when you have a good experience, the ending match. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. how you wind it down. The warm up's important and the wind down is important. Mm-hmm. And this is what gets you, uh, shall we say, customer satisfaction. Right. You got happy customers. They want to come back to you. Good Yelp reviews. You did. Yeah. Uh, the Yelp review in this D. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we want to make sure that we're getting that whole piece for, for the gentleman and that. They've now stepped beyond the, the primitive and basic aspects of, you know, I ain't got the, the King Kong joint. Mm-hmm. And also, if they do this whole thing right, not only are they marinating the fish, but they're also going to be fucking her spirit and her mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. yeah so we're going to do a, an exclusive members-only series every Thursday. It's going to be called Sex Talk. We're also going to bring on different women and ask them how they like different things to stimulate them. And at the end of the day, you're going to turn around and be a, a sexual warlock out here. You did. Yes, sir. You got any tricks and tips you want to you wanna share with us? <laughs> you want to lay anything out the back? Oh, man. Uh, whoo. My tricks and tips. If I expose them, I might expose right. my game, right, man. Right, right, right. <laughs> you got to be my paywall, bro. I but I, I will say this, though. I will say this. Um, being cunning and clever definitely helps a lot. Uh because you know where some guys find themselves, they find themselves hard to transition from certain thing to certain thing to certain thing, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, take, for instance, like, I don't know if you do it a lot. Like, say someone says something, you have a witty joke to throw right back at it. Right, right. Right? But it still gets you in the direction that you want to go. Right. That, that's a segue. A segue, mm-hmm. right? A lot of guys don't want to do that part. Mm. I think a lot of men lack the segueing ability. Now, are you talking about a segue in terms of like going from like a non-sexual situation and transitioning it into intercourse? Yes. Kind of thing? Yeah. I think that's actually a common challenge that guys have, especially when they don't either have the confidence or the rapport with the female. Mm-hmm. And it's always nice when you can use a particular tool or instrument. My chief choice is music. I like to leverage the music to transition on it. Mm-hmm. I got a partner I went to college with. He's actually a, a, a doctor of psychology. And he likes to use movies. Mm-hmm. So he's like, yeah, quite, you know, I always have her. And this is before Netflix and chill. Like, mm-hmm. he's been doing this for a minute. You know, you know, I like to put on a movie. And I, I hate to admit it and share a secret, but he used to use um, the notebook. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He used to use the notebook. Wow. That was his go-to. I was like, all right, bro. And he says, in, in the absence of the notebook, any movie that has a lot of sex in it, he says, we'll start watching the movie, and when the sex starts popping off, that's when I start popping off. He's like, you know, they start getting that going. He's like, you know, I just roll right with the movie. And he's like, you know, so when that scene starts, I start maxing her out, and hey, by the time the movie ends, it's like, hey, is that your, uh, is that your jacket over there? <laughs> you know, he's like, it's time to roll. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I get, I get, I get, I get one. Yeah. Uh, learn some magic. You can use the magic as a bargaining tool just for fun, uh-huh. like a, a bet scenario. Oh, I see. Right? I see. It's like, hey, look, if I, uh, if I, if I can get you with this trick, then uh, you gotta give me a kiss. Uh-huh. Fair? Huh? Got, got some smooth ones out of that. And because the, the girls forget that she has to do the kiss. Okay, she, 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 wants, see, back. she wants to see the magic. She wants to see the magic. Right, right. Right. So, and you only gotta be a master magician. You can just learn one trick off YouTube, and I think. <laughs> Because <laughs> here's the thing, women love mysticism, that's, that's the truth. They love anything in the spiritual spooky realm. You know what? Magic is a great metaphor for the artful nature of overcoming the female resistance, which is only like a play thing. Like if they like you, they want to give in, but they need the reason, right? Mm-hmm. So you'll have a female where you can't say, hey, come over to my house and get smashed tomorrow night. Like you can't say that, but you could say, Oh, hey, come over to my house. I want to do fill in the blank with something that's irrelevant, that she doesn't even care about, but is a pretext to get her to come over. Whether it's like, hey, come over to my, my spot. We just got a new sauna in the complex. Or, 
come over to my spot, let's hop in the hot tub, let's go mm -hmm. swimming, let's fill in the blank with check anything. Out, check out some of these garments I made. You know what? I want to see what you look like in it. Can you take your shirt off and uh -huh. put, put mine on? Huh. Yeah. Huh. Ooh! Hey. And you know what? Um, and I know we got to uh, catch up with these super chats. Talk to us, Sarah. He said, how do you balance having no mercy and not coming across heartless for my ex? She said, I have no empathy because I don't care about others' problems. Also, tuition. Hey, piece of the saints. <laughs> hey, bruh, low-key, you don't need to care about other people's problems. You're damn right. But one thing I can tell you is you never want to appear cruel. And if you are a member at patreon.com slash the saint in the center, I did a review of a book called The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli. And this book explains how to lead and how to rule. And one thing he said, he says, a, a ruler should never be hated. I Meaning if people hate you, they will become staunchly against you. And there's no explanation, there's no change in behavior that can get them to stop being your enemies. Mm -hmm. That was a major mistake Trump made. Mm -hmm. He became hated, and that's why they got him without a one-term president. You see? Mm -hmm. he, he made his enemies too staunchly against him emotionally. And you become hated by a number of different ways, one of which is being perceived as cruel, right? So if you're cruel, and it sounds like his girlfriend was starting to perceive him as cruel because he was speaking out of his mouth that he didn't care about certain individuals who he probably shouldn't care about because they have nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. Eyes on the prize, I like that, but you have to realize that the female psychology and the male psychology are different. And for the average female, even if you never do one kind thing ever in your whole life, not one kind action, a kind word goes a long way in her psychology. So you have to always play the game from the clouds. Get it. Any sure. thoughts on that one? Uh, you know what? I always say less is more mm. when I speak, mm. especially to females. And I try to keep it short, precise. Mm. Don't keep going on. Right. And uh, I think you need to enact some moments when you're out in public with this female. Find mm. opportunities in which you can enact your generosity Ooh. and uh, uh, show your heart on your sleeve because when she can witness you be nice to other people, mm. that will like act. That'll, that'll lessen that a lot, right. that whole thing. I just don't see them doing it on a day-by-day -day basis. Maybe because they don't have the means, sometimes. <laughs> but sometimes, some, sometimes don't, you know, it doesn't like need the means. It could be like simply helping, uh, helping some old lady you know, at right. the grocery store or she's trying to reach for something. Or, you know, or uh, you know, the sharing your word with a person out in public in her presence. Uh, I find the public displays to be more powerful because you're enacting it and uh it'll set upon something in her heart every time i've been around a female and i've done something like that mm -hmm. they've always been like oh oh that really, that really touched me oh my goodness oh he's such a good god I'm, I'm i'm really always doing that yeah, you know yeah. but i just noticed like it, it touches them more than it touches the person i did the thing to uh -huh. you know and it's action rather than words too which is power exactly right. yeah okay Derek Paval hit us up uh, pre-chat and wanted to make sure he sent some love and uh, told us he got, got to stop hitting us with all this game. Mm. Peace to the Saints. Shout out to Derek. He's always coming through. Appreciate Lawson A said, Peace to the Saints. Uh, ready for this ism, you heard? <laughs> and shout out to Kudzai, who just became a member at patreon.com slash the Saint Center. And if you are not a member, you better get your membership before tomorrow because we're going to do the first sex talk tomorrow. And I really like this because so much of what men really need to know involves details. Mm -hmm. And especially where it comes to sex and physicality with women, the female body is a mystery. And I don't purport to have mastered the female body because I like to fuck the mind, right? Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about this body. Sarah's going to give us a little bit of game. Um, you, you're a sex therapist, right, by trade? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So she's a sex therapist by trade. So we're going to talk about this a little bit. And we're going to make sure we get a nice little flow of females to tell you what they like and how they like it done. And then I can give you a little bit of balance. We can go ahead and let y'all get your swerve on. Get it. Stop asking if I'm okay. Right, right. So she's saying when you land that pipe, well, well we can't give them. That's for, that's for tomorrow. Know. That's for tomorrow. Teaser. So we can preview it. Teaser. Yeah, you, women know how to tease too, huh? Yeah. She, yeah. Lifetime professionals. Huh. Smokes11 said, based on the way the Saints pulled up, the level of game will be high tonight. Peace to the Saints, 100. Oh, true indeed. We ain't even really got in deep yet. Shout out to Marquise, who became a member at patreon.com slash the Saint the Center. And um, I think we are caught up on this side as far as the uh, cash apps go, everybody. Oh, no, I was actually just on the second page. What else you got? 
Uh, Rob says, women can smell insecurity like a shark can smell blood. And the mm. more and more you show, the less and less she is attracted. Women are naturally insecure and are looking for strength and sureness in men. Peace to the saints. That is a wise man. And he's totally right because the opposite of insecurity is confidence. And that is extremely attractive. And as he said, the female's looking for a balance to what she is rather than a duplication of what she is. If she wanted to duplicate what she is, she would be a lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> right? Although sometimes the lesbian chicks do try to get like the fake version of the guy. Yeah. That's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> um, and we, we could talk about that too. That'd probably be a, a sex talk conversation. Could be. Yeah. Uh, indeed. Karu Nat said, just finished The Prince today and started The Art of War. Nice. Okay, so he's actually checking out the, the reviews on Patreon. And those are very detailed. I think the, the Prince review is like a seven part series. Yeah. With notes. It was good. With notes. It's good. It's good. Yes. What happened? I don't know. Computer died? I don't know. Shout out to Mitch. He writes Peace to the Saints. That's one of our emperors. And he actually has a great product coming out for everyone. It's, it's going to be a, like a, a journal. And I think it's great. He's going to make some like pre, um, some templated pages where you can write down your to-do list and things like this. Mm -hmm. And then like your weekly goal. Which I like because every day before I go to sleep, I always write my to-do list for the next day. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think that we shouldn't assume that we should wake up in the morning. We need to wake up with purpose. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like, if you go to sleep without a to-do list, it's like, I just feel like you're just breathing up all this air for nothing. That's true. You heard me. That's true. I got it. Back. Don't you just hate it when people just exist in your business and don't do anything? Like, I just, I just hate it. I, I just hate existing. Like, just to exist. Mm -hmm. Like, something has to fulfill a purpose for why I'm here. Right, it's like, let's live big or, or, or not live. Exactly. Shout out to Vapor saying, comes through with tuition. Shout out to Vito, comes through Prosperous. He writes, peace to them. Big homie. Appreciate all the game. Well, it, it is truly a pleasure. And Vapor saying, comes right back. He writes, question in the live chat. Vapor, go ahead and pop that question back in. We are ready for it. And Sarah's going to look at the chat to get that question from Vapor Saint. And Lawson writes, he already, he sent it by Cash App. Okay. Yeah, so he can just type his in right here. I will find it. Lawson writes, I love you too. Is I love you too commitment language? Absolutely. Uh, I'm sure you guys could hear her. She's right next to the camera. Absolutely, it's commitment language. And let me advise you that, one, you don't want to be the first person to say I love you. I promise you of that. And number two, if you ain't feeling it, there's no need to lie. It's not going to give you any advantage. In fact, on the contrary, I'd say you're holding even more cards if she says, I love you, and you say, appreciate it. <laughs> right? Oh, Lord. <laughs> she's, she's trying to hold you hostage with language. Yeah. And uh, if you're going to give in to that, then that's on you. She's trying to kidnap you with her words. Exactly. Mm. You heard it from a woman or something. And she can trap you in with a response. Oh. Mm. Women have many ways, many traps. You know, you know I, I thought about that. And I was like, oh man, on a part, it was like, I, like the loving end, I'm like, all right, if she says it first, great. I'm like, if I'm feeling it, I can say it back. Right. I don't feel like it's too much of a commitment, especially if it's a good woman. I'm like, all right, you're, you're good and you're good enough. Or holy smoly, it wouldn't be good enough. Damn, you almost got to be like a nine out of 10 in character for me to say that back. I'll take a nine out of 10. And I'll what we're say saying that. is, is don't just frivolously use that response if you are not at that nine out of ten. If you're not, kidding. yeah, don't you? Don't, because no, that's com don't because that's committed language, and if you are not there for the commitment, and yeah. you are not committed to that woman in any way, just don't. The saints know what they at. They, right. the saints know what these girls is at. <laughs> Vapor Saint said, "Let's say I'm living with my ex girlfriend for the first time in my studio apartment, where I'm paying all the rent. What should I be doing to ensure she follows my rules and guidelines? Lead." Mm -hmm. That is true, and I want to tell you, if someone's under your ro your roof, rent-free, this is generally the situation that a child would be in when you're in your parents' home, you're in there rent-free. And we know they're, they're running everything. You are subject to whatever the hell crazy or rational things come out of their mind. Mm -hmm. So surely if she's living there rent-free, she already knows that there's a hierarchy and you're the one that's at the top of the hierarchy. But there's two sides to leadership. There's the position that you get because of your title, meaning you're, you're called the boss. But then there's the other side of actually being the boss, which is 
showing the skills of leadership on a regular basis, showing discipline. And I can assure you that women, if not led by men, will resort to certain behaviors that are completely inexcusable. So there are some women who will let themselves go physically if they're not in the household with a man or if they're not in pursuit of a man. And if they're in the household with a man who's not a real man, they will be overweight and let themselves go because he's not waking up every day getting after it physically in terms of exercise and then asking her, well, hey love, what's your physical fitness health goal? And making sure that he's leading her in that process. And that's why certain things that we're coming out are to, uh, coming out with are tools to provide to you so that you're legit. And when you're legit and you give her some advice, she can follow it because she sees the fruits of your thinking and of your behavior. So, for example, me, I always say you should have goals in three major areas. Financial, which is clear on why that is. Health, which is your physical fitness, your eating, all that good stuff. And relationships, professional relationships, romantic relationships, all of these things. If you always have high goals in those three areas, your high moments will be exceptionally high. You'll always be moving forward. Your low moments will be extremely rare and brief. Now, the thing is, if you always have a health goal, it'd be weird if you would look at this woman every day and not ask her what hers is. It's true. Right? Yeah. You just let her sit like a goddamn couch potato and every day you lacing up them boxing shoes, going to the boxing gym, getting it in, and you come back and she's sitting in the same place? That doesn't add up, because one thing I can promise you, birds of a feather flock, flock together. together. You're not gonna let that, that is happen. so true. People who are perfectly fit don't have women who are whales, unless there's an underlying strange reason, i.e. the black guys who are dating fat white women, right? Yeah. And <laughs> Which I'm highly confused Woo! at every day of my life. I'm Woo! like, Dude, what are you doing, bro? You see a small black dude walking around, with like the white version of Rescue and it's like, what is, what is she going? paying them bills, bro? She paying them bills? Is she? Usually. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. She okay. paying them bills. Come on, brother. Come on. Um. Up. So he says, um, I'm living with my ex GF, with my ex GF for the first time. He said my ex girl. Ooh, that wasn't See, the first he, comment. Yeah. In the first comment, he must have adjusted that one. Yeah. He said, let's say I'm living with my ex girlfriend for the first time in my studio apartment where I'm paying all the rent. Why are you living with an ex girlfriend to be? Yeah, so that's one thing I'd be curious about. Why I live with an ex-girlfriend? And then secondly, well, why are you paying all the rent, right. right? Those two don't go together. It's not necessary. You know, there's some situations where if she's doing everything you need her to do and she's damn near functioning not only as a girlfriend but also as an employee, then sure, that can be understandable in as much as she's bringing you money and you keeping it camping and you're collecting 100% of the money, which is why you're paying for all the expenses. That's one thing. But if she's a student and you ask her to do something and she's like, oh, no, I can't do that. I have to do my homework or I have to study for a test. And she's deprioritizing your requests. Well, then there's no reason for you to be paying for anything because you're not getting any value. What are you paying for? Huh? Take it to the curb. Yitty. So he says, what should I do to ensure she follows my rules and guidelines? You know, the key is that it's a matter of submission, not force. You did. That's why they choose a P. So you don't have to make her follow your rules and guidelines. She should submit to your rules and guidelines. And in the absence of knowing what they are, she should ask. You know, I've definitely had females say, hey, you know, what do you think of me wearing this outfit? You know, me, I don't like to tell people how to live. I like people to be who they really are. You know? mm -hmm. But if she's ever like, you know, should I wear this or, or she's questioning, she'll bring that to me to figure out what the rule and the guideline is. And I'll, I'll, I won't tell her what to do. What I'll do is I'll tell her how to think about it and tell her how to look at the situation. Give her a little bit of game and see what she do with it. You did? Mm. Yeah, a little bit of game go far away. You did. Uh, some of these females can't soak it up. You know, I had one girl just recently, man. Cute chick. Uh -huh. met, her, met her on the plane. Okay. And uh, was talking to her and we went out. And she, all she does is sit around and smoke. We hookah, hookah, <laughs> right? But wait, here's the crazy thing. Like they tripped me out, and she said, "Yeah, you know, I'm getting a little weight." I said, "You know, hey, okay, we can work on that. You like to work out? I like to work out. You can run some track." She literally shut that whole thing down, and I said, "You're done." Like in my head, I was like, "You're done. Right. This whole thing is done." Like you want to sit down and smoke all day, and you don't want to exercise. I was like. Yeah, uh, we're tossing you into the uh, trash bin in my head. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you are. You're trash. Ah, ah. Yeah, I was, I was done with her, bro. 
throw the wrist up for these hoes one time. Mm. One right time. there, I said. One time. You think a man would have watched like this? Huh. What I deal with trash like you? Uh, stop! Uh, stop it! <laughs> Why? Look, look. Number one, in terms of these fat hoes, and you know, I'm not even so concerned about the fat ones. I, it's even the skinny fat ones. Some of them be skinny fat. That's a whole. That is mind boggling. How yeah. you gonna be a skinny fat? Now the, top, <laughs> the, 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 the stand up and turn around though. But stand up and turn around though. If you stand up and turn around and it's all jelly, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, that's bad. It's all good. That's on facts. a physical level, it's all, all good. But on a spiritual level, it's not all good. So what I'm saying is this: when you meet a woman and you live by a high standard, this is new to her. So you have to understand that with all things, just like you're coming into a new job, she has to be trained and get an opportunity to grow to, to learn. Mm -hmm. So any woman or man that's around me, you ask me, what do you work out? You go to the gym? It doesn't really matter what they say, yes, no, every now and then. Um, all I know is that I'm gonna try to help raise them up. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm here to do charity work, but because I'm going to live by my standard. And if you're going to be around me, we're going to mm -hmm. see what you can do. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you got a bum knee, cool. Let's work those arms. Let's work them triceps. Let's do what we can do. Because mm -hmm. life is about doing what we can do. Right? Like me, if I was like, oh, man, I want to get the, the hair, the jabrizi hair, and get the line on the side. I can't do that. And I got to do what I can do. Right? Yeah. So that's the thing is like everybody can function with what God gave them. Yeah. Right? We ain't trying to ask me to get the Jabrizi hair or you to dunk like Jordan, right? Or anybody to be super player like the big homie. Mm -hmm. So just operate from your level. But the thing is this. If you encounter one, she's like, I don't go to the gym. You're like, okay, that's cool. And then she comes into your life and you're like, okay, well, you know, hey, guess what you're doing today? And she's like, no, I don't have any plans. Oh, but you do have some plans. Mm. <laughs> okay. And then you go ahead and put her in position mm -hmm. and she don't want to function. Then you know, okay, I'm, that's strike one. You know, we don't put you in position again. Oh, that's strike two. Put you in position again. Okay, now you're trying. Now we're getting somewhere. You see how them strikes work now. Okay, cool. Maybe mm -hmm. let's make some progress. But if you ask you strike three, then you're out of there. Now wait, Marquette. What if the girl says, I'm never, mm. ever, ever, ever doing that? That girl said mm. basically. She said, I'm never, ever, but ever, 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 ever. That's all the right, right. <laughs> no, That's what she said. Yo, that's why I said, oh, you're done. Yeah. I know it would have been like, Okay, but she broke it down to a never point. I was like, okay, yeah, well, I, you know, I couldn't even do it, bro. You I couldn't what? even do it. When I heard that, it hit my soul. Something hit my spirit. It said, run. Yeah, absolutely. Because the thing about a female who would not protect her temple and wouldn't take care of her body, especially if she smokes, um, you got to think, well, if I ever were to get you pregnant, can you kick that habit or can you provide uh, nourishing foods to my child? Because yeah. if you want to sit around and eat uh, Hostess cupcakes all day, that's cool. But mm -hmm. if you're pregnant eating Hostess cupcakes and you're not getting the full spectrum of vitamin that the child needs. Mm -hmm. So now your bad habits are reflecting onto that child. Um, and sometimes you have to understand that people coming from various situations in life, they may have never had the opportunity to be under a great leader. Hey. Daddy might have been a bum. What's crazy? Ex boyfriend might have been a loser. Facts. Yeah. What's crazy is on top of her smoking, the thing that she's smoking out of has candy at the tip of it. Right. So it's like a bad habit on top of a bad, bad habit. habit. I'm like, wait, what the hell? Bro, it's was tripping when I found that. I was on the little FaceTime joint. I said, wait, why, why are you sucking on the tip of the uh, hookah thing? Huh, There's candy on the top of it. I said, this bitch is smoking. I mean, stop. This, this woman this is female. smoking. This, this female, female is smoking. Uh -huh. And eating candy at the same time. Uh, uh, Lord, your teeth cannot fall out any faster. Uh, um, by Cash App, Isaiah writes, post it in the YouTube comments. So Isaiah, also known as Screech, in the YouTube comments, has a question. All right. First, I have Sabodai Davis, who says, Peace to the Saints. Man, I got a funniest story about the little homie relating to this live. And um, you said, what was the name? Yeah, okay, so while you're looking for that one, I will carry on. Shout out to Orion Stoner, the saint is consistent, and peace to the whole Stoner family. He says, peace to the saints. Shout out to Rienzi, consistent with intuition. By PayPal, Ozan comes through. He writes, 
red velvet. I know he said it like that. I know when he typed it, I know he typed it with passion. He write red velvet mm. and iced out. Watch G's looking super playerific. <laughs> I added that part, playerific. Thank you for the game early in the morning. Peace to the Saints from Germany. Matt has actually caught a chick who's a German national. You dig? She's working in Ireland. <clears throat> so I might be pulling up. You never know. You never know. I got a lot of fans in Germany. Good morning. You dig? I got a lot of fans in Germany. Bro, I need to see what that German I've had some. Do. I've had some experiences. The German women are very curious and good. Mm. Uh, it would be worth a mission. I don't think the partying is going to be as good in Germany as it was in Greece. And we are going to do a video about... Uh, women around the world. So our next video, we're going to do one on Greece. We're going to give you like five categorical breakdowns of like approachability of the females, average attractiveness level of the females, average amount the guys are hating in that country, um, the nightlife in the country, and all the things you need to know to be successful. Yeah, Yiddy. Does the person I'm looking for Sam? Screech. Mm -hmm. Is C like C S C R E E C H E Z. Shout out to McKenzie. He writes, how to keep it player when giving a compliment? That's a great question. And a part of it, McKenzie, is who you are. So when you, when you look super player, you did it. When you're clearly the man on the scene, like a sex machine, and you give out that compliment, it's going to be super player. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest time to give out the compliment is when you're obviously in the stronger position, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. if, like, say you pull up on somebody. You pull up and you're in a Phantom, or you pull up and you're in a whatever the hell exotic car you're in, and you see a guy who's in a BMW, nice, cool color, you say, hey, bro, man, that color is saucy, my boy. That's a great compliment, and he really appreciates it because he knows that you got the sauce, and you just giving him a little, a little drip of it. You know what I mean? He, he appreciates that, and he's like, okay, the big dog do me a compliment. And so when you're in a strong position like that, everything you say is players. It can only be player. You did. That's facts. Right? That's facts. And, and people appreciate sincerity. When you give a targeted, sincere compliment, it's going to mean something. Which is to say you should be looking to notice that which no one else notices or be very meaningful in the way you describe something. And that is going to make it impactful. But you really want to think about the kind of compliments you give to a female. You did. You know what's crazy? Huh. When complimenting a female, I was like, I was on a roll. Uh -huh. It was on a roll. On a roll like a couple days ago. Because starting to really learn more about fashion. Right? Okay. And really like, I remember when you first pointed out these shirts, like, that's a mock neck. It's like, no, yeah. that. I was like, I didn't know these were real mock necks. I had a white girl who put me on this shit. I got really? a civilized ass, civilized ass white girl named Kelly, and mm -hmm. she didn't taught me a whole lot of shit. See? Yeah. See, the you thing used to get wet, wet. It was crazy. Yeah, oh, was flashbacks. Oh, 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 damn. But go ahead. <laughs> this boy turned into Raven Simone. Yeah. But uh, but basically, um, it was these females, and I said, okay, yeah, I like the fit, and I started describing every last bit of it. Uh -huh. Then also related it to the environment they were in. I was like, okay, who comes to this environment wearing a longer dress, but it still looks nice. Right. And it was like, yeah, it's like Beauty and the Freak, you know, at the bottom, a little freak at the top. <laughs> so the you know, like, but but I was hitting everything on point when it came to their accessories, knowing the names of them, yeah. and the girls were really impressed. Said, well, he knows what he's talking about. So only a level of education in a certain field can help you bring that compliment more mm. out to light, I feel. So the guys should really do their um, research and understanding what they're about to get the compliment on. That way, when they do get the compliment, it does come across extremely sincere because you know a level of knowledge about, about it and you're educating the other person about it as well. I like how you put that because knowledge is something that globally empowers you, mm. right? And you're right in that when you have knowledge, you're able to outsmart your competitors mm -hmm. and you're able to enthrall your targets. So to that point, one time I was actually at the Cosmopolitan and I was checking in with my assistant. I'm checking into the hotel in the VIP line. Good looking Asian shit, tall too. And I like, I like things that don't make sense. Tall Asian women big booty Asian women, things that don't make no sense. So um, she tall and fine, and I see her nails look really well done, and I can see her makeup is very well applied. Now, I've, I've spent a good amount of time in Asia, and so as soon as I saw how she was getting down, I knew, like, this one's Korean. 
full stop. Mm. Because the Chinese women, they don't apply their makeup in this particular way. Like the best cosmetic products in the world come out of Korea. So I was like, the, the, the neatness of this woman and also her English accent is, is Korean. The Chinese being a very tonal language, when they learn English, it, it still doesn't quite sound right. Mm. So I think this woman's clearly Korean. And then I could tell from her name because I speak some Korean myself. So she's checking us in. And then I say, uh, before we were about to leave, I say, Mana so on the way, oh. And she's like, you know Korean? And then I was like, nah. And then she was like, oh my God. And I was like, she's like, how did you know I was Korean? I was like, well, number one, first from your nails, because Korean women really take care of themselves. And I can see that your nails are, you know, pretty fresh, well done, unique style. And then your name, which that's a very common Korean name. And she's like, oh my God, Kim, like, no one knows I'm Korean. Everyone's like, oh, are you Chinese? Everybody's Chinese to these people. I was like, yeah. So, <laughs> that, right? I mean, it's so, a big country, right? Yeah, got so a lot of races. races. <laughs> yeah, everybody's Chinese to these people. But the point is that knowledge empowers you to give the most targeted, remarkable, insightful comment to whereas an average clown would have just said, oh, you're pretty, you're beautiful, which was like... I don't like, like Asians. Like, yeah. You said what? <laughs> I like Asians. I like Asians. Asian. I like Asians. I like Asians. That's the worst. Mm -hmm. They said they got that yellow fever. You found that screech? I did, but it's not a question. It just said new boss member and bought conference to footage. So much game, Marka. Uh, peace to the Saints. Oh, that's love. Yes, mm -hmm. peace to the Saint, actually. And that's a cool thing. The boss level members and the emperors, they can actually um, DM. And we guarantee responses and we guarantee quick responses. Mm -hmm. So that's a beautiful thing. And they also get access to some content that everyone else doesn't get as well. So that's, that's a beautiful thing. And that's prosperity. We love to see prosperity. So peace of the saints for the winning, the rich saints. You did. Let us all be rich. And he got that conference two footage, and that's so important because, Sarah, as you're here, you see all these products I got. In fact, this is a brand new product that we just got today that's in the lab. And I love it because I love playerism, you heard me? Mm -hmm. And this right here, when the last time you saw some a grown man wearing belt? Prince. Prince. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Prince had fashion sense. Thank too. you. Now go in your mama room right now. Knock on your mama door. Say, Mama, tell me something about Prince. <laughs> that man is. Pl That's the source of all playerism. You did that. Look, the man got the holy water of playerism. If your mama don't like Prince, I don't know what's wrong with you. But look, check this out. I got a ton of products, and in fact, give me those track shoes right there, those running shoes. Gotcha, Thank sir. You, sir. Um, the reason he's getting that conference two footage is so that he can learn about product-based business and, and how to create products such as these. And you know, when I create products, I always test them, so I don't put them straight out on the market, but this is a running shoe. We're gonna test this out. And I design things thoughtfully. Like when you're running, you don't wanna bend over to tie your shoes, so we got this, so you can just basically tighten it up and it's good to go run, don't have to worry about it, set it and forget it. They're light, we got a little bit of memory foam in here. So even though it's a, a, it's a light sole, so that it's almost like a barefoot running shoe so that you run with proper form, um, it's also very comfortable, very flexible, and still like you're gonna be able to run that distance. And so we got more, um, more padding here, because most people run incorrectly, they heel plant, which means instead of landing here, where you really should land, they land here which is like running on the brakes. That's a bad thing. So we make sure that it's, it's a really well-designed shoe. We always do Rolls Royce quality. And also, you know, yes? We also want to show the boxing shoe. Yeah, we absolutely. Have. Oh, and I'm going to show you a, a terrible pair of boxing shoes from Adidas. Yeah, bust those out. Okay. Um, and this is why he's, he's uh, getting that conference two footage so you can learn about creating great products. These are a pair of Adidas boxing shoes, and you can probably see the hole in the front of them. Um, which is a terrible thing. And boxing shoes, you don't expect them to last long because that's kind of how they're designed not to last long. But look at all these laces, and these are mid tops. Most boxing shoes are high tops. You see all these goddamn laces here? It takes forever, and these actually aren't laced all the way up, but it takes forever to lace them. So we made a couple improvements. Number one, we kept the shoe light. So this is a, this is a light boxing shoe as it should be, this is a size 13. Um, and you'll notice here that we actually removed all the eyelets, which is the, the holes for lacing the shoes. We removed the eyelets from here because when you wear boxing shoes, you actually lace them all the way 
up and then the shoes are strings are long so you end up tying them around the ankle and in the front so we remove the eyelets because you're going to wrap the shoelaces around the ankle anyways and then we have two straps you'll find some nikes that actually have one strap but none of them have two straps so we provide the two straps to give you the level of ankle support that you actually are going to need when you're fighting so these are designed in a revolutionary way reducing the eyelets so that you can get your shoes on and off quickly you have to spend your whole day time with goddamn things and you got the double layer of support and then they're extremely light because of the materials we're using. You see the Adidas use like unnecessary plastics which are gonna make your feet hot because it's not breathable. So this is true stupidity. It's not breathable. They put freaking plastic on it. We have a canvas-like material. It's actually Flyknit. And Flyknit is a very light, breathable material. So it's lighter, it's gonna be cooler for your foot and it's gonna be a superior shoe. I was gonna make that comment um, how looking at this shoe Obviously, you can't breathe. But looking at this shoe, you can see, like, yeah, can't breathe. And the number one reason people like shoes stink isn't it because like all that bacteria gets trapped in there? And the wetness, it's not able to dry because you don't get the airflow in and out. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's like really dumb. I don't know why they deal with so many shoes. I walked into, um, I think it was a. Uh, was it uh, Dick's Sporting Goods? Right. My brother was buying some basketball shoes, and I looked at him and I said, Jakai, do you realize? how ugly the shoes you buy are. Like first you realize how ugly they are, two, do you realize how pointless they are and their build? Like, yeah. like athletes don't really know ingenuity like that. No. They don't, they're not even paying attention to all the problems they're going through on a consistent basis, but this is this is a good shoe. You can see like, I was like, the fact that it was made out of this kind of material here was the first thing I noticed. I was like, oh wow, like my shoes are plastic. Like the ones I have, right? The ones I owned before yeah. this. Yeah all plastic, can't breathe, and yeah, be, be wet in there. And that's what happens when a practitioner produces a product for that industry or for that pursuit, right? When mm. a fighter produces a fighting shoe, you're gonna get a better product. And even if it's not, even if you're producing something outside of your area of expertise, Saints, what you're able to do once you get on a consultation with me is to get the expertise of me saying, this is a process you go through to create high quality products, and when you don't know something, when there's a gap in knowledge, mm -hmm. here are the experts you appeal to, to make sure that you can actually do this right. And me, I got products in every vertical, you heard me? So that's why I'm able to do so much. And we even got this product is gonna be coming out soon, which okay. is a cosmetic product. Um, actually, you know what? That's my gift to you. Oh, okay. Um, oh, and appreciate it. Just to give you a little, you guys a little preview, I might even tell you exactly what it is but this product is better than aftershave. And I know we were actually talking about this in Greece. Yeah. Um, a lot of men will shave and they'll put on aftershave, which stings because it has alcohol in it, mm -hmm. right? Like rubbing alcohol. Mm -hmm. And that's theoretically supposed to be to prevent bacteria and cuts and things like that. But you don't have a significant enough cuts on your face to get an infection, mm. <laughs> right? And then you look at the properties of uh, bacteria and you find, or not bacteria, but the properties of alcohol, it's actually not good to put on your skin mm. over time. So you're actually causing issues to your skin over time in terms of the ability to replenish itself, hold moisture and things like that. And so this, you put on your skin and this is moisturizing you, it's healing you, it's doing all these different things, and it's 100% all natural. You read the ingredients on your aftershave and you won't be able to pronounce half of them. Mm. And generally, that's not a good thing to put into your body or onto your body. So that's a great moisturizer. Um, try that out. Let me know what you think. That's all natural, so it doesn't have any fragrance in it. Jojoba oil. Jojoba. Jojoba oil. Jojoba, yep. Jojoba oil. Yep. That sounds like some um, spiritual oil. Yeah, it is. This sounds like some biblical oil. Yeah, and a lot of stuff you find online is not good because there, there's levels to everything right yeah just like olive oil there's levels to it so this i'll be putting out on the market soon saints so uh, keep an eye out for that one i got a couple more for you you ready uh sam said what's your opinion on getting into a business partnership with a friend i want own it myself but don't have the resources or connections that he does in this particular field piece yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing business with a friend. Um, the problem that you'll encounter in doing business with friends or family is that you'll probably learn who they really are if you haven't already. Woo! <laughs> right? You know, like, 
I actually prefer to do business with friends and family. Some people say don't mix business and family. That's idiotic. You would only avoid doing that if your family is dirtbags or if your friends are dirtbags. Mm -hmm. Now, your family being dirtbags, you can't really help. You were born into that. Mm -hmm. But if your friends are dirtbags, that's probably a reflection of you. And so you should upgrade yourself and thereby you'll upgrade your relationships. But I think that if he's offering value, those are the kind of people you want to do business with, people who can bring value. You never want to have a business relationship be 50-50 because it's rarely accurate. It sounds fair, but it's not accurate. And generally, you want to own a business or have a majority holding if you can. If it's not possible, so be it. And then having business dealings with a friend is preferred because they'll do you favors and show you love because there is love. Like, for example, uh, we were out in Greece and um, we were getting Ubers and he didn't have self-service. I had self-service. So I got, I called all the Ubers. I'm supposed to send him a, a bill for his half of the Uber cost, but one, I don't feel like actually calculating it. <laughs> I don't feel like calculating So I'm not going to calculate it. It's my gift to you. Oh, appreciate my that. Gift to you. Oh, thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. You're welcome. I appreciate that. But, they, it was racking up. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, it was, it was. Because we took like a bunch of long rides to the airport back and forth. Yeah. And, um, but among friends, you don't mind giving gifts or doing favors or overlooking small mistakes, you know? like So like say a $500 debt between friends, you're like, okay, don't worry about it, you're friends. But if you're a stranger to someone, you're like, oh, I'm gonna need my $250. You owe me $250 and 23 cents. <laughs> and that, you know, that's a different dynamic. So we say with an assassin, you know, that three sentence Bible, be yourself, be good to yourself, be good to good people. It's nothing wrong with being good to good people. But the key is to make sure that they are good people. When you're good to good people, you know it'll always come back, right? They'll show you love, they'll do you favors. And that's what life is about, is enjoying those things. HOS. Hoskin. Yeah. Talk Peace Saints, I coined the term pimp vestment. It's when you make an investment that facilitates the growth of your game. What are some examples of this as explained by a P besides health and education? Wow, he's a pimp vestment. Mm -hmm. You got anything on it? Oh, like other things that, that could work? Yeah, he wants examples of a pimp vestment, something that facilitates the growth of your game besides health and education. Of your game? Yes, he says health and education aside from that. Besides, would, yeah. yeah. Uh, Don't, not including health and education. I don't know. To me, I'm like, that's all I got. Like, that's what I've been looking at life like. That's all I got. My health and my education. That's it. I make a pimp investment all the time, primarily in people. One thing I think I've been uniquely able to do, especially coming from the gutter, is to look at somebody and say, you're underachieving. Not, not say that to them, but mm -hmm. to, to see that they're underachieving based on who they really are. Mm. which is why I always say show the greatest part of who you are and most people are rarely showing that and half the time it's because they don't know how great they are mm. people might look at me and say Mark you are cocky arrogant son of a gun like yeah but I delivered the goods over the last three decades like I'm delivering goods out here right. so yeah yeah I'm proud of it but I can also look at other people and see how great they are. That's why my compliments, when I compliment a woman, I'm going to dress her down with them compliments, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking real fast and what I see, things she can't even see. But I make a pimp investment in people. Like, for example, Sarah right here. I told Sarah, you know, I think you're only achieving at 20% of what you actually are. And I really mean that. Because when I met Sarah, I found her to be very quick-witted, very clever, very thoughtful. And even when I listen back to her on the live session, she's very articulate. And most people are not articulate, even if they are intelligent. So I know that there's a unique like, set of personality traits. There's a unique number of intellectual abilities that she has that she's probably not been getting paid for. And so what I want to do is bring her into this thing of ours where she can get compensated for that. And she can not only you know grow her, whatever she's growing, and you know, flourish financially within the context of what we're doing, but also help me out, right? Like run my stuff up. You heard me? Like I, I said, hey, go get me some more girls. and bring some girls in. We need to do this sex talk series. She's giving great ideas. I'm writing another book, as you guys know, and we we're talking about some of the ideas in the book. And there's this one term, this acronym that she was like, well, why don't you call it this? And I was like, God damn, that's genius. Mm. It was ruthless. And when you read the book, I'm like, damn, that's ruthless. But it was genius. She's an evil genius. And when I can put people's brains to use, that's a pimp investment, because check this out. 
when I found you, if you were on this level, and then I bring you to this level, all of this right here, you owe me for that. You owe me for that, because you didn't even know about this right here. You're going to be happy that you're hearing all of this. That was me. Don't ever forget that. And here's the thing. All this growth that she gets, or any woman or any man that's within this ism, I also get to benefit from that, and the society gets to benefit from that. You did. So that's a pimp investment. I always go deep on relationships, and that's why earlier when I said to remember someone's name, whether it's a male, female, service industry, whatever, is a great pimp investment. Mm. Church. Mm. Church. And let us prosper, sir. I told you we need uh, five more people we need to add to this team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's for you bringing in us a bunch of money. Right. And we got to pay for them. This is true. Okay. Uh, Saramondo STI said this city is popping getting customs on Melrose have a good night start of the day <laughs> Peace to the Saints you know Melrose man. I used to uh, you know, I used to do a lot of stuff on Melrose when I was a young boy We used to rob on Melrose Oh Lord <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was out there man I was off the porch you heard me If you read my book uh, there's a great one of my great robbing stories uh, on Melrose but yeah, I was off the porch in the real way. Bro, I only did was I shopped on the road. That's all I ever yeah. did. I just shopped on the so road. I couldn't afford to shop, so we robbed on Melrose. And then people shopped from us. You heard know I me? Mean? Once we oh. had the merch, then we were slanging it. Yeah. Damn. Like Product based business. Damn. Yes, indeed. My man was going in hard. That's Early. a great place, actually, at that point. Uh, shout out to Deja, since through tuition, writes Peace to the Saints. Shout out to the Lady Saints. And I saw her, she was in the Luçon shirt. Um, so she's copying the merch off of Amazon. And we got some dope stuff coming up. So if you click the link tree in the description, you can see the merch on Amazon. I also just made a new shirt that Amazon banned it. Um, but I, it's on my Teespring now. So the link is not in the description. But if you DM me on IG, it's a shirt that says, um, Too Sexy for My Shirt. And it shows a woman topless, but it says too sexy for my shirt over her chest. Oh, yeah. Why they that? Ah, Amazon is sensitive, you know. Oh, wow. They sensitive. That's crazy. But I like it because all my stuff, are, it's all remarkable, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the key is when you're out in the world, yeah, you could go talk to a girl, but it's even better when the girl says, oh, I like that shirt, you know? I Y'all not going to understand. The shirts this man be wearing, <laughs> people love them. They love them. Like, I'm going to be honest. I'm a person, I don't like graphic tees. I don't like them. I feel you. Then I started watching him wear them. And then people would come up and, like, they would make, like, oh, I identify as a white woman. Like, that, look, there's nobody on the face of this planet that has proved to me the power of these stupid quotes on shirts. This man has given me inspiration. I'm about to give me a shirt. From him, because I don't even know how to come up with these things as well as he does. I got you. I, you know, this is... We're coming up with the flip side of that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, right. And then Sarah, being an evil genius, sometimes more evil than genius, um, she has said, oh, you got the I identify as a white woman shirt. I want the I identify as a black man shirt, but who are we going to put on it? So I don't know. Like, you know who will be a good person? She's like, uh, you know, Cosby, uh... OJ Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually, I, I started to make the shirt, and then once I, I got the image and everything ready, I was like, nah, this is evil. Uh, people are going to have sincere hatred. You don't want to stir sincere hatred. Yeah. That would be a violation of one of Machiavelli's principles. Uh, but it was going to be the OJ picture where he's putting on the glove, the murder glove. Uh, that was gonna be the one. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's 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 definitely. But for me to wear, which would make it. No, yes. that's what makes it worse. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she gets it. That's no, but that was the point. It. That oh, was no. what. That was the oh, whole evil. point. Yeah. That yeah, was the point. Evil. evil. Yes. You yeah. see. Yeah. yeah. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> that was not an accident. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh. And let me kick another compliment to you guys because Jabrizi was talking about the compliments, and I don't even know if I should give this piece of game. Now I'm gonna say this for the members. Okay. I'm going to say this one for the members. Uh, I'm going to write it down so I remember. It's a nice compliment, and I'm going to write this down so you can see this. Okay. Um, so you tell the chick, I like that fill in the blank, right? Uh -huh. And then you go ahead and... Ah! And then you say, oh, that's smooth. Right? Oh, 
That's facts. That's facts. Okay. I've seen you do this. Then you <laughs> take her hand. Mm-hmm. And then you, you do that, and then you say, that's hard. I might have to demo that one for you. <laughs> oh, well, I haven't seen you do the full yeah, thing. Yeah, I could have sworn I've seen you yeah, do I, this I've before. Done, I've done variations of this, but this one, I'm going to say this one, one for members. It's, um, it's a structure of how you can give a verbal compliment and incorporate some physicality into it so that you both end up touching each other. And this is a great segue to popping things off. Because mm. it, it starts with a little bit of comedy, a little bit of playfulness, moves quickly to the physicality, and then you can get where you want to be. I'm going to save this one for the members. But I'm going to just, I'm going to like, for the members. Because that, that's, that's too good. I can't just be giving that one out. Yeah. I, mean, I give out too much free game. In fact, it's not free game. It's only free if you don't pay, right? True. It's only free if you make it free by not paying. But shout out to the people who pay what they owe. That's why I'm saving this one for the members. Cause that's too deep. It's too much. That's too much. Yeah. Too much. Too much. Too much. Too much. East Dago says, "I'm 21, and almost everybody I know, their females have all tried to mess with me. Mm. This has damaged relations with my brothers and friends, and has sparked up envy. How could I prevent this?" Mm. Well, I'm guessing mess with me sexually. Yes, yeah. indeed. Number one, saying I've experienced this, maybe not as much as you, because you must be player if they all trying it, or these hoes are scumbags, man. I can't call it, but. I grew up around goons in L.A., and we always had the belief that, well, if somebody girl try you, she she pitch it to you underhand, well, you might as well mark McGuire that shit out the park. Mm. Mm. Go ahead and hit that home run, and then come back and tell me about it, mm. and then we're going to do the G thing, you heard me? Mm -hmm. which is to say that, you know, we're going to strategize that, okay, okay, you smash her, it was my girl, but now it's not my girl. Well, now that I know the relationship is over and she's a, a dirtbag, Maybe I have to work some bread up out of her, you know, like see what we can extract before we discard her. You see, but keeping it G is if she came at you, it was your responsibility to hit because she handed out pie. Somebody got to have some. And I don't expect you not to. Right. And, Especially and, if she's bad. Right. And if she's a friend, if you're a friend, mm -hmm. I want you to experience good things. Because if she's giving out good pie, no sense in a stranger consuming, you might as well get you a piece of pie since she handed it out. And then once there's no more pie to be gone, just toss her to the curb. You know what I'm saying? You get the piece of pie, I'm going to go for the bread, make it a money move, and then we go, ah, get her up out of there. You know what? I don't think people look at the bigger picture. No, Either don't. way, she's trash. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in that case, you might as well hit because she's about to go anyway. Right. She's already on a timer at that point. And if you're, say if, if it's my girl and she come at you, mm -hmm. and, then you, and you do the Boy Scout thing, and you're like, no, 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 ma'am. <laughs> I can't have sex. I can't have sexual relations with you. It wouldn't be right. When you come back to me like, hey, Mark, put your girls a slut back. And I said, oh, gee, how do you figure that out? You're like, she tried to screw me. And I'm like, oh, well, one, I might not believe. If I'm a sucker, I might not believe you. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm a sucker, I might get mad at you. It's mm -hmm. though you're, it's though, it's though you're creating problems. When really, that girl has loyalty to me. Mm -hmm. Right? And as long as you didn't come at her, if she's offering it to you, that shows that she's a dirtbag. So I got to get rid of her regardless. So if before I get rid of her, it would be considerate for me to go ahead and let you make a play, then run a play, run a play. These are like a garden tool. Run a play, exactly. <laughs> oh, you got 2%? Mm -hmm. then let's go ahead and plug it in then. You could have told me before you got the two. You like to get it to the edge, Thank huh? you. Yeah, you got it. Like that. Yeah, it's in the side. Alright, and then Hoscom said, Mark, I was watching an older video where you said you got a woman to tattoo your name and you hadn't even slayed her yet. Right. What is the story and how are you able to do this? Right. I'm interested. That story is actually on patreon.com slash the Saint the Center. And, um, so definitely do check it out there. Um, just search the word tattoo and you'll find it. And long story short, I don't want to say I got her to do that because I actually did not ask her. In fact, I actually told her not to do it. Oh, she still did. She still did. Oh, she crazy. Yeah, she still did. That's why I said, please do not do that. Ooh. Oh, and she still did. Oh, and, and just to take it up one level, it's crazy, too, because uh, she lived on the East Coast, and I was in the East Coast at the time, but she already knew I had to move to the West Coast. Mm. So she did this knowing I was moving across the country. 
Oh, she damn. She let me know she was dedicated. Yeah, that's dedication right there. That's dedication. No, that's crazy. That's dedication. Uh, shout out to Isaiah. He writes, life must be good. You're in Fiji water times. Oh, true indeed. You know, my biggest issues are golden watches being stolen, stolen from me. It's my biggest issue right now. Gold watches being stolen. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say those are good problems to have. You know there's a gold shortage? Mm. Yeah, that's what my jeweler was telling me. He was like, yeah, we can remake these, but it's going to take more money and more time because there's a gold shortage. And then I was shopping for another watch. I want to make myself feel better. I was mad that I lost my two watches. I was bummed out. And so then I went to the watch store, and um, I don't like Rolexes personally because you can actually buy a resale Rolex on Walmart.com. I swear to God. So I was like, I can't. <laughs> oh, darling, I can't do it. <laughs> Peacock. Anyway, so I'm at the watch store. I wanted to check out the Hublots because they have a, a watch called the Sapphire. You know, we were talking about the crystal jewelry and mm -hmm. things like that. And so Hublot has a Sapphire. I think it's like half a million. Um, but the whole thing is see-through. You see all the movements, even the band is see-through. I'm going to show you real quick because it's crazy. Oh, wow. So it's this huge. idea I was talking about already existed. Well, if you got a half a million dollars to put on your wrist, it exists. Uh, but if you don't, then nah, don't do this. Wow. Yeah, that looks like a full crystal on it. Yeah, it's crazy. Right? That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to make a better one. <laughs> right. Hey, man. For half a million bucks, I bet you could. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's another watch company that I really love. Um, which is called the Bay, and it's not very well known unless you're like really into watches and you have a lot of money that you like to spend on watches. Mm -hmm. And they started off as a pocket watch company. They make their watches in a castle in Switzerland, in an actual castle, and they do everything in house. Um, and they even have artists who use like magnifying glasses to make miniature art on the watch, mm -hmm. and it's just crazy. So this is the one oh, I can't show you the videos on my phone, but I will show you the one I'm looking at, but. They only make 800 watches a year, so... They have to hand make each one. Yeah, yeah. Wow. In-house. There's yeah. there's no manufacturing of it. Yes. Wow. Every piece is handmade. Players. It's all, so it's all, like, different. Right. Each one is an original. They all yes. have a title, they all have a number. There's no duplicates. Wow. Each one is an original piece. So if you lose your watch... You can't ever get that watch you again. you see it again, you know, that is your watch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, they didn't buy another one, no, they stole your watch. Oh, that's that was so number 273. Miami. Yeah, it's the, they're gorgeous timepieces. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, so yes, Peace of the Saints, it is Fiji water. Cesar writes, best tailor shops you have visited. You know, I don't really visit tailor shops, so to speak. Um... The best experience is when you have the tailor come to you. So in Beijing, if you go to the Waldorf Astoria, there's a service they can set up for you where you can have the tailor come to you. If you end up in Beijing, I can give you some great recommendations. I like my tailors to either be uh, gay men or beautiful women. Mm -hmm. Gay men, which you'll never hear me say, I want to be voluntarily around gay men, but in the case of a suit, uh, they're the perfect tailor because they know how the suit should feel when you move in it because they're a man and they, a man and they wear suits. And then number two, because they're gay, they're really in the fashion and they're detail-oriented similar to women mm -hmm. and they really want it to look good. You know what I'm saying? They really want it to look good. That's true. And if you want to get into that playerism, you dig? They know how to get you there because they can be that flamboyant style. You heard me? That's bad. Whereas like most great tailors are old men who are a little bit more serious and boring. So they, they can tailor the suit, they can create the suit, but they can't help choose the fabrics and the patterns that you want. You know what I'm saying? So get you a gay male, if possible. And I had one in Dubai who was excellent. Uh, shout out to Sanjay. Um, I don't know if he knows. I know he's gay, but uh, I'm pretty damn sure he oh, is. Oh, damn. You can just do him out there. Him. Shout like, out I'm straight. Him. Yeah, I know. Come on, dude. I got my five wives out here in, in Dubai. <laughs> Come on, bro. Um, or I like a beautiful woman, and my tailor in Beijing is a beautiful woman. She actually just recently had a kid, and um, it's just a great experience to have a beautiful woman get you suited up. You dig? That's yeah. True. And also, you if you've had a suit tailored, it's a little more intimate than you want because like they'll literally put their hand up in between your legs to like find out like where your meat is gonna hang, and they'll ask you like. You want to hang on this side or you want to hang on this side? Because it's a, it's a suit made from scratch. So mm -hmm. it fits like a glove. 
So she she basically like got her hand right here, like which side do you want to be on? I'm like, I like to be on this side. She's like, all right, cool. We're gonna take a little inch, half centimeter here, and you know, and they go, they be right. You, oh, if, wow. you, if you don't follow me on IG, I'll put my IG right here, and you can actually look at my stories. You'll see a couple different times where I got suits made in, in different countries. Marquette leaving out the part where the gay dude did it too. <laughs> 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 With stop, you wanted to hang on. No, 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 no. <laughs> you hanging on this side? What is this? Is this your leg? <laughs> oh my goodness. Shout out, man. But that, that life is good, man. That's that's a good life right there. Because the thing I really relish is, you know, I was at the Bellagio um, a couple months ago. And I'm hanging out with a couple females. I think I might have did a player story on this one. Actually, yes, I did do a player story. If you remember the real estate agent, the police officer, and I think maybe the third one was a teacher, I forget. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I did a I did a player story on this. But when I was there, there's this gorgeous older British white woman. Like you can tell, like people are wealthy. And she's walking by, she's like, Excuse me, darling, like, where did you get this jacket? And she was saying it as though she wanted to wear the goddamn jacket. I'm like, looking at her, like, these are men's clothes, obviously. I was like, you know, I'm like, uh, I got it in Dubai. She was like, where in Dubai? You know, she was like, you know, like, I need a name, you know, I need to, mm -hmm. I need a, a, let me know which boutique, and I just had to tell her, like, I had this made from scratch. Mm. And she was like, naturally, I mean, it fits lovely, you know, I appreciate that. And those are the kind of experiences that you just, I was about to say you can't buy, but you can buy them actually. And I did. <laughs> it's a major advantage, right? Um, because the kind of connections and the advantage you get from that kind of a suit versus what Kevin Samuels is getting off the rack is radically different, right? Because mm -hmm. people who actually have money can look at a suit and tell like, you didn't go to Nordstrom to get that. Like, mm -hmm. you, know, you didn't went somewhere to get that. And uh, so it, it's a dope thing, and, and that's that's status, and that's why when I'm out in the world and somebody get out their body, I tell them, you know what the difference between you and I is? Belt loops. Mm. And when they're like, what? They don't even get it. They don't get it. They don't the get difference it. between you and I is belt loops. It's belt loops. You know, look at my waist. There's no belt loops because this is made for Marquette Devon Burton. That's the size this is. No one else can fit in this. And your pants are mass produced by the tens of thousands, mm -hmm. which are a representation of you, which is unimportant and, you know, just, you're the same as those other 10,000 people. Yeah, be going in on the difference them. is belt loops. So show me my motherfucking respect. Yeah, mm -hmm. boss talk. You know what? You said something of, about, um, uh, gay, you said something about gay men and them dressing flamboyant. Yeah. That might, you know what? My manager's gay, and I'm not gonna right. lie. There's really something you can learn from like oh, right. a gay dude. My yeah. father, he told me that he learned about fashion because he used to work inside of a um, high-end uh, fashion store, and my dad would have to dress people, mm. and the gay dude had to stop my dad and be like, "You messed right. it all up. Well, you gotta they, stop." They be serious. They be serious. serious. Yeah, my dad yeah. was like telling me the whole story, and that's how my dad kind of found out some things about fashion in terms of how to dress. But yeah, I, I think you have a video on like what we can learn from women might be a fun one to say, hey, look, now gay dudes aren't your competitors, ah. but it might be a thing or two you can learn from them because, look, for the majority of straight males in this population, they do be dressing a little bummy, I ain't gonna lie. Oh, man, cats be looking raggedy, but I'm cool with it, though, because, you know, somebody got to Woo! He said, I'm not going to even expose the secrets. He said, I can suffer. Yeah. <laughs> somebody got to lose for a player to win, man. Woo! <laughs> hey, peace to the saints. You hear me? Knowledge Ooh. Seeker said, Peace to the Saints, bot conference two today. I'm trying to create a product or two that'll help me quit my job. That's right, man. Praise the Lord. Um, and shout out to Vaporson. He writes question in the live chat. Did you get that one earlier? We already did that one earlier. Oh, we did? Mm -hmm. Okay. You quit. You sure? Because this might be a second one. I just want to make sure. Oh, okay. I always pay what I owe. You did. Ralph comes through. He writes, Peace to the Saints. Great book consultation soon after. Oh, great book. I didn't say the black box. He's saying a great book. He's looking at consultation soon after. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And he's referring to the black box. If you haven't gotten it, you can read the black box um, on Amazon. You can get a paperback, or you can get a lower cost copy at assassin.com. I believe it's in the link tree. 
But um, yeah, man. So we got the sex, the sex talk series. I'm really gonna enjoy that. And mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm sure I'm gonna learn some things too, right? Yeah. I'm sure I'm gonna learn some things too. I'm interested to see how this one's gonna go. Oh, it's gonna be wild. It's gonna be wild. And we have some other aspects of it that are, you know me. I like I like to throw the surprises out. Right, so we really do. Yeah. Oh, he got another one. Yeah, so we it's gonna be it's gonna be good. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. Um, and then the financials, guys, do not try to make yourself look wealthy if you're not. And even if you are wealthy, don't leave with that because you're presenting as though that's your only value. In fact, it's much better to stay low key because if you really got it, they can smell it on you. Get it. And further, it's much cooler to keep it low key, and then they just they they find out. That's that's more exciting. Like man, he's super humble. Like I didn't even know he was living like that. And then they find out. They're like, oh, okay, that's what's up. You know, like yeah. they're like he was staying cool with it. Like they they respect that a lot more. That's per, like perspective shift. They might be thinking one thing about you, but things just get elevated to a whole other level. My boxing trainer, he told me he's like, bro, I didn't even know you was balling like that. He came out with me one day. He was like, I've been going to the gym for like three months straight yeah, now. Yeah. And like, we hung out just for one time. He, he, he was like, he said, you come off soft. I ain't gonna lie. He was like, <laughs> he told me, my boy dishes back up. up. He's like, I didn't even like you when I first met you, actually. <laughs> yeah, he had me dying. He was like, oh, wait, did you, did you, did you, did she say the same thing? She didn't just raise her hand. Like, I didn't even like you when I first met you. Go ahead, tell the people, tell the people. <laughs> oh, I thought you were a douche. Oh, I am an asshole. Oh, oh, tell them oh. more. Tell them oh, more. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you thought Mark Oh, yeah. Oh, tell them more. It took him a year. <laughs> it took you a year? It took you a year. Oh, whew, Lord. All right. She didn't like me for a whole year. I didn't. And she, she ain't even hiding it. No. Mm, carry on. <laughs> mm, carry on. Yeah. But real quick, I didn't give a shit, goddammit. I got this. Carry on. Carry on. I also did, only knew you in like one very yeah, limited, one, one very limited setting. And, so. and uh, she was there with some other individuals, some gentlemen, right? Mm-hmm. And I was running the females program. You hear me? Mm-hmm. And they didn't like how I was running her program. Mm, wait, the men. The men. Right. She didn't like it either, but the men also didn't like it. Okay. So they were trying to play defense for me. Yeah. With yeah. him. Here's the they thing. were trying to shut it down. Like, no. Yeah. Oh, they was hating like that. Yeah, bad. But here's the thing, though. If I'm running this female program, like I should, mm-hmm. you gentlemen don't have anything to do with me or this female. Mm-hmm. So you should mind your own affairs. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, when you this player, they think they play in defense, but I don't even consider that defense. They invisible to me. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know they was playing defense. He didn't. Defense <laughs> I didn't even know. I had oh. to tell him later that was them trying to shut you down. He was yeah. like, oh, that never even occurred to me. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like. It's not even mm-hmm. in my lane. <laughs> and as I said before, like, you can come to Jordan. Tell them what you're going to do. Like, look, I'm about to play defense on you. You know, if you try to dribble, I'm going to go for the steal. If you try to go for the shot, I'm, I'm going to try to block. And the Jordan say, oh, that's cool, because I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm about to do. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, I'm going to fake left, and then I'm going to go right. Yeah. I just told you I'm going to fake left. So when I fake left, I'm not going that way. I'm going right. So be ready. All right? I'm going to fake left. I'm going to go right. Then I'm going to go behind the back. Then I'm going to cross right. Then I'm going to cross left. Then I'm going to fake like I'm going to take the shot. But I actually gonna take a shot right after that. It's gonna be a fadeaway though. So you should want to jump forward toward me. And I'm gonna take that fadeaway. And it's gonna be all net. And then the buzzer's gonna ring, and that's gonna mean you lost. <laughs> now, that Jordan's told you all of that in advance, you would think you'd be able to stop it. Because mm-hmm. he told you. Mm-hmm. But you can't stop it because he's Jordan and you're you. Mm. Mm. It's the difference between us. Belt loops. <laughs> <laughs> Belt loops. <laughs> Saints in two years, we're going to make a t-shirt because everybody going to know what it means. Mm. <laughs> Belt loops. Anyways, man, and I just want to let you guys know that if you keep your eyes on the prize, them other guys don't matter. They don't. You keep your eyes on the prize, them other guys don't matter. Man, should I, should I tell them what I did? Which time? <laughs> the last time I hit you up. Talk to me. So, I was, uh, I was with one of my homies, mm. and uh, we was ganging up with these girls, right? Mm. 6'3", 
six foot volleyball girl. Mm, you know, love it. Tall, Ooh. tall, tall. I missed out. Right? I missed out. Hey, what was crazy was <laughs> we left. We went here, went there, went there. We came back to the hotel that that uh, I was staying at, mm. and then I seen them again. I was like, oh, she's with another guy. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah, and in my head I was like, you know what? Kudos, salute, do you thing, baby. You know what I mean? Like, right. I ain't mad at you. I'm, mm-hmm. just, I'm letting this one go. I don't, I don't, like, I'm not trying to pursue this one. I'm like, all right, I've already engaged with them. I know I can have them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just say, what's up, real quick? Hi, yada yada yada. Being cordial. Being cordial. Mm-hmm. And then the guy looks at me, and he starts to hate, and he says, I think it's time to go. Ah. Oh. And he looks dead at me and Made says, I think. Nation. I said, yo, is this guy with you? The girl said, no. I said, you didn't come with him? No. Mm. You just met him? Yeah. Mm. Okay. You guys, enjoy your time. Turn around and look at my homie. I'm like, I don't like how you're speaking to me. Mm. Doesn't he know I'm doing him a favor? Mm. You let him live. I was letting him live. Mm-hmm. I was like, nah, now you can't go. Mm. <laughs> then I go back, find the girls. Hey, we all heading to. We're going back to our hotel. He's taking us. Mm. You're coming with me instead. Oh, oh really? Say what? Exactly. Then she said, wait, my friend's over there. I said, tell her it's time to go. Then, Got him. homie tried to tie her up, and I said, parked up, I said, I think it's time to go. Mm. Look him dead in his eye. Mm. Take that. I ain't gonna lie, man. Yeah, you're not gonna play. That's that, that's that. I'm gonna tell you what I'm about to do, <laughs> and it's about to happen, and watch what happens. I know this little nerd was buying him drinks. Woo! He was my, he was gaming him up for me. Woo! I left. This nigga came through and was he gaming up for me. He play. You did the effing. Exactly. Woo-hoo. So, mm, mm-hmm. it doesn't pay to hate. You know how they say crime don't pay? That's a lie. Crime does pay. But it don't pay to hate. Hating don't pay. No. And I didn't even want him to, but he made me do it. I didn't even want him. I didn't want him, man. That's the hood part. I didn't even want him. Uh, I found Vapor Saint's second question. He said, I'm 19, she's 27, I'm single, she's married. She is bad and I'm fiending. We work the same shift. How do I take her down like a hitman? Yeah, this is grimy. Oh, he said, yeah, this is grimy. Yeah. Nah, this ain't grimy. This is what you mean in your life. Usually I would say it's grimy because she's married, but I remember being a young boy and one that in my life. Read that question to me again because it sounds good. I like to hear it. Talk to me. <laughs> he said, I'm 19. Woo! She's he heard it. She's 27. Woo! I'm Cougar. single. Oh, I know you're single, bro. She married. Ain't we all single? <laughs> <laughs> she uh, married. Huh? Yeah, but she's bad and I'm female. Mm, we me. work the same shift. How do Ooh. I take her down like a hitman? Oh, it can be done. I actually took this chick down. Her name was Lefty, mm-hmm. right? She was half Filipino, half Mexican. Mm-hmm. Slim little thing, brunette, long hair. Um, I was 16 and she was in her early 20s. I don't know what age. She was dating some older white guy. He's a lawyer. Well to do. I wasn't even actually feeling. I was just, you know, if it comes through, it comes through. Mm-hmm. It came through. It was a lovely thing. Anyways, uh, check this out. Number one, you have to first figure out how she views you. Because if she views you lower than her on a hierarchy, on all hierarchies, then you're done. There's really nothing you can do. But if there is a hierarchy that you can be equal as a peer, I shouldn't say equal, but I should say on the same level or higher than her, then you got action. What I mean is this. In the situation I described with Letty, the older woman who in fact was actually my boss. I was working on an after school program and she was my actual boss. Mm. Um, she was clearly above me in the pay hierarchy and in the professional hierarchy and in the age hierarchy. But she knew I was a super player because I was the man. Like when I said I was the man in high school, like I was voted best dressed, best smile, Mr. Irresistible. Like I was the guy. Mm. And my job was across the street from my high school. So there's an elementary school across the street from the high school. So it was very apparent. Like my social status was very clear to her. Mm. Like my reputation was very known. And because of that, I had social capital. Right, and everybody always has that feeling they wish they could go back to high school and be the cool person. But if you can't be the cool person, the best thing you can do is to fuck the cool guy, right? That's true. You know what I'm saying? And so that's so true with these teachers. Woo! 
Oh, Lord. Ooh, these teachers are scandalous nowadays. Hey. I wish I would have caught one. I, Ooh, I tried to catch my smash teacher, Mrs. Signs. She had even added me on Facebook when I was in my mid 20s. And, um, and then I started shooting my shot again. And she mm. like, unfriended me, like, maybe you still do it. So I'm like, yes, Miss Signs. <laughs> I will never stop. I will never stop. You're on the hit list. <laughs> but, anyways, is when you can get up on one of them hierarchies. And then she has that respect for you, that's gonna allow you to function. So I would start figuring out how you can build yourself in esteem. But keep it low key, don't be thirsty, and play with it a little bit. You know, play with it. You don't wanna come directly at it because she's gonna pull up a wall because she knows there's a major age gap and she's married, right? So you gotta finesse it and also make sure you can get a little bit of that private time. Because nothing's gonna pop off unless you get that private time. And let's be real, you're 19. She's not gonna go out on a date with you, right? Similarly, Lefty never went out on a date with me, but my school was having a new campus under construction, my high school. So we were actually at the work site, and then we had eventually moseyed on over to the school part that was under development, which was completely abandoned because it was after school. And then she gave me some amazing brand. She said, let me know when you're going to come. I said, what? She said, let me know. I was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you didn't let me know. I was like, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. I, I tried, but uh, <laughs> I'm only 16. <laughs> I'm only 16. Uh, shout out to Lance. Became a patron at patreon.com slash the Saint the Center. So all the saints welcome Lance warmly to this thing of ours. What's up, Lance? Yes, indeed. And I'm excited for this conference because as Sarah's come on board, I've been trying to explain to her like what the assassin is, put her on this ism. And what I realized is that you never understand the assassin better than when you're among the saints. That's like, true. You know what I'm saying? Like when you get to see how we operate, how we talk, how we show love, see our traditions, like then you understand what this is really about. When you see, you hear about people's businesses that they've built from scratch, business partners they've met, that's when you understand what we're really about, what we're really doing. And that all like happens at the conference. You know, mm -hmm. so that that was a, a fond memory. We got to do that again, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, how about you, sir? You caught up? I'm caught up. Okay, fantastic. Now with this, uh, with that sex one at the top, mm -hmm. yeah, the, it was insecurities in sex, insecurities in um, see. sex, financial, and clinginess, clinginess. So the emotional insecurity. I met guys. It's it's worse than like you're a black dude. I think you hear a lot of the, the, the insecurities, mm -hmm. the sexual ones. Cause like, oh, girls, right. Yeah, you, you'll be hearing girls being like, yeah, you know, some guys aren't happy with me dating black guys, right? right. And they'll, they'll be revealing like, guys will be like, the second that a guy finds out that she smashed a black dude, They'll be bringing up all types of bullshit, like, I mean, BS, excuse me. I think, um, Jabri, I think we might literally have to do a whole separate live, because because this is a rich topic, mm -hmm. um, and Sarah is named Sarah, which is the whitest girl name <laughs> of all white girl names. Yeah. When a white girl, and I, I meet her and I don't know her name, I say, let me guess your name, Sarah. Right. And it's usually right. If it's not right, I'm like, Kate. Right. Um, oh, Katie, 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 mm -hmm. Sarah, some variation, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but this topic right here is so juicy. If we go into it on this heading, um, it would make sense. We might, I'm, we might have to end this live mm. and then just kick on a new one. But we got to make a good title, saying like, let me know in the chat if this is the one to make, um, which is essentially you're about to go into. Was it black guys being insecure, or or the girl being insecure, or guys being insecure that a girl's dealt with black guys? Like yeah, black that guys. one, the last one, not the black last guys. one. But I think all of it can be encompassed. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's just weird when you're black. There's a perspective you see amongst all three of those. Yeah. Gotta be that side of that. that that's juicy. Also on the other side. What'd you say? You can also have the flip side of that. The flip side. That's the flip side when you're the white girl in a relationship or having sexual relationships with a black man, you can hit the other side of all of those too. Who hates on you for that? Who hates on you later for that? Mm. Oh, like the guys afterward. Like, right. You've been dating niggers. Right, and uh -huh. it can either be angry or can make them very insecure. Um, they have comparison issues uh, constantly. The big black King Kong sloths. Right. Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think that's for I think that's for another time. Oh yeah, that's deep. We yeah, no, we can go deep. Okay, and um, 
also can is the chat being updated? Because I don't know if my chat is being updated. Because I, I want to know if they if they want to hear about this. I'm on top chat. I can't buy a chat. Is that what I'm on? I don't know. But um, oh. see, the other thing I'd be curious about is, and we have we haven't talked about like the kind of people always accuse me of dealing with white girls. Mm -hmm. For the record, Marquette loves all girls. You did all women. Uh, so, ladies, if you're watching this, uh, the Instagram is instagram.com slash Devon. Log in. Um, so, they accuse me of dealing with a lot of white women, which apparently they haven't noticed that 60% of the country is white, white people. Yeah. So, obviously, you'd be more likely. And then when you look at income, you go farther up in income, you lose the black population. And then when you sort it by profession, which my profession has been technology, then you have even fewer people of color. Forget black, you have fewer people of color. Um, and then you look at my trajectory of living in Korea, doing business in China, and all these things, like there are no black people in Korea, right? That's so, true. you know, if they're not in the army, you know, they and we're not around them because I'm in business, so you know, people with petty minds think petty thoughts, but I say that to say this. What I do observe in black guys who consistently date white women with intention generally is broke boy 3000, and the girl is looking, she's a broke digger. Not a gold digger, she's a broke digger. That's looking for a, a guy different to, one right there. Yeah, that's <laughs> a different one. She's looking for a guy to fix, and then the guy being broke has to, basically, he's a hobo sexual. He'd be homeless without that chick, so he's laying down the pipe for a place to stay at night, right? So it's like a match made in heaven. Now, the thing is, the white girl is skimming off the cream of the crop as far as getting the black guys, and it's just only on the physical level, not mm -hmm. on the mental level, right? But me, when I'm dealing with white women or any other kind of woman, I'm trying to skim off the top. I'm not doing what these, these boys are doing on the streets. I'm trying to skim it off the top. Mm -hmm. If I give me an Arab girl, I'm going to skim off the top. If I give me a black girl, I'm trying to skim off the top. And that's the way it should be. Get it. Um, so anyways, Saints, um, we're going to end this one and we're thinking about doing another live. Um, I, I know you, you probably got time restraints, but if not, I'm down to do one on interracial dating. I don't know what to title it, though. If any of you guys are geniuses and got a good title on it, I'm down to do it, but you got to give me a good title. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, shout out to Brian. He writes, Peace to the Saints. Can you uh, increase the, the thermostat? What do I have it at? 70. I have it at 70? You told me to set it 70. That's hella dumb. What tell me three? that we'll, from now on we'll do 73 when the session starts. Okay. And I'll probably change it again. Why do you think I put my hoodie on? Oh, yeah, my toe is cold as hell. Um, shout out to Vapor Saint, came back. Man, this thing is prosperous. Y'all need to get like Vapor Saint. Get in, get your bread up, live prosperous. <laughs> Tay writes that long sleeve is so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Reminder of her bed, oh, she teary. She said it's so romantic. <laughs> I like that. It's the jokester. It's Romeo and Juliet in your hair. Joint. You, uh, yeah, that's the modern day Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. um, you got you dressed like because I remember how we could get him the dressed. doily the doily collar and then yeah that's what the chain is like. I told you white girls be knowing the name of stuff. <laughs> I just said yeah because I don't know what that is like yeah like, I don't yeah those, those frilly white collars earlier. that would come out of the top of them. <laughs> yeah, she taught me two words earlier. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's crazy out here. Like, they be knowing stuff. How did she even know that? Right. Well, she was in ballet, right? That's yeah. why. Yeah. Doily. Well, yeah. Doilet. 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 It's usually the uh, term used for like um, like something that's lacy, like okay. white lace. Like uh, you used to see like uh, in older houses on like end tables, I'm someone would let. Real quick, I, I don't think that's fascinating. Yeah. I apologize for the <laughs> impolite, but um, the guys say interracial dating, sexual dynamics. Mm -hmm. Ah. Um, interracial, but we also want to talk about the. All right, I guess it's like sexual or politics and sexual dynamics of interracial dating. Ah, I like the politics part. Yeah, okay. that's kind of what it is, right? When mm -hmm. people be looking at you sideways. Yeah. And they got something to say. It's like the most insecure are black women and then like every, other, every other like nationality of man Ooh. other than black. Ooh. I might be, I, I might have just said something. 
I might have just said something. It's gonna I, come oh, out then now. I just said, I just said it's, VW, didn't I? I said VW. It's going to come out now. Like, Ooh. the chat's finally going to blow up. Like. Uh, before we go on to the next live session, I just want to say for the record, I love black women. I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> he's scared now. Look, too. he's frightened. I know, because these black women hate getting angry. Look. He's frightened. And, yeah. And I can say that a lot of... Black women, you might say, oh, why don't you post photos with black women? It's like, because they don't want to be posted on photos on the internet. And I will tell you that at some very clear level, certainly they're a lot less open than other women. So it's not that I have less volume of black women. It's that they don't want to come on camera. They don't want your, their picture posted. And um, there's just like, there's just a different feel and culture around that. Um, but I will tell you in terms of approaching women, and I approach a lot of women, Mostly just for sport. But out of 100 black women I approach, you might get 20 across the finish line. 20%. Now, mind you, they're no better than any other women. You approach 100 white girls, you probably get like 60 across the finish line. You approach 100 Asian girls, you might get like 30 across the finish line. 100 Latinas, you might get like 60 across the finish line. So um, you might ask yourself, well, why are the black girls not getting across the finish line? Um, well, it ain't me. Carry on! <laughs> Carry on! Uh, go ahead and click the end button. I think it's that X in the corner. Got it. And I'll come around. You gonna say bye? Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, did you click it already? No. She good. I got you. That girl good. That girl good. He has a closing statement. He hasn't even given yeah, out. Yeah, we need to end with He's our gotta tradition. sign out. Yeah, that girl good. Let us end this the way we always end this, with the creed of the assassin. Wherever you are, repeat this with full conviction, knowing this is true of you. The creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I am going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. And I am going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. And Sarah, you should be repeating this next time. I didn't want to break it because once you start I was leaving you with your on-camera special guest tonight. Hell nah. <laughs> Hell nah. Anybody that's in view of this ism... I was with their... I was in spirit. Put it this way. When we do our conference and the staff at the conference building, oh, they need to be saying the damn creed too. You don't be around the creed and not say the creed. Right? Okay. Yeah, catch a contact, catch a contact, right? It's like, if he's smoking the weed, <laughs> you catch a contact. It's in the air, catch a contact. Um, but yeah, don't ever let that creed just go by like oh, that. Oh, and now you got everybody mad at me. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's my fun. Disrespect. Um, and, and for real, though, because our message comes through our conduct. And you are now a part of this. Right? So, like, you, you're representing this. So, yeah. Like, everything is in you. Like, the, the assassin is all... It's, it, you're in it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's not just me. So... They gonna be thinking Sarah's the opposition. She, she's the opposite. Right? Right, right. They're like, oh, Sarah, what, why are you talking? Huh, huh. <laughs> I didn't hear Sarah. They're gonna be like, turn the camera around. <laughs> all right. All right, go ahead and shut us out. All right.